Um, hi everyone. Our topic today is navigating the vernacular language movement and Chinese translation literature from 1898 to 1938, an examination of preference using topic modeling. Um, all right. The Chinese society underwent um, fundamental change in the 19th century and 20th century. We think that the reform of the written Chinese was a significant way to understand Chinese modernization. Since the spread of new knowledge and ideology were complete by, by the circulation of um, by the circulation of vernacular publication, so we try to um, examine the translation literature in the 19th century. Um, studying in the actually in in the early modern China, there are two general styles of written Chinese: classical Chinese and written vernacular Chinese. The latter includes Mandarin, other Han dialects and Chinese romanization. Starting from the mid-19th century, with the vernacular language movement fostered a radical change in the Chinese written system, which was to replace classical Chinese with vernacular Chinese. Our project aims to um, re-examine the politics of language in the vernacular language movement um, by applying copy modeling to the preference collection of Chinese translation literature, only the preference were examined because it, they did not know the translator's purpose and translation strategy, with, which we think could better reflect translator's attitude toward the Chinese tra uh, language. So my colleague Du Ke Li will elaborate on our methodology in this project. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, um, about our uh, corpus, we have a collection of um, more than uh, 2,000 uh, prefaces um, from like around 100 years ago, which consists of slightly more than 1 million words. And as you may know, the first step to do a Chinese NLP is to segment the text into um, words. Um, and um, our special problem here is that um, the texts are written in different languages. Some are in uh, classical Chinese, some are in ven uh, vernacular Chinese, and some are even so a mixture of the both. So uh, however, the uh, existing uh, uh, um, tokenizer, the models, are specialized uh, on um, uh, classical Chinese or uh, vernacular Chinese. So there is no model. Uh, it's actually suitable for, to uh, do the tokenization for our data. And um, we tested both models on, on the text, and we noticed that since uh, because the uh, uh, classical Chinese words, most of them are monosyllabic words, so the um, the classical Chinese model tend to split all the words into single characters, which is something we don't want to have. So uh, we uh, uh, we made the decision to use uh, uh, a vernacular Chinese model directly. And uh, we got the data. We uh, we want to get uh, get a general impression uh, of what is going on in this in this text collection. So. Um, the easiest way is to run a topic model. And uh, we, we, we do the standard uh, pre-processing procedures. And another problem here is uh, the prefaces, uh, the text, text lengths of the uh, prefaces are very different. So, uh, so uh, my suggest, uh, uh, strategy was to put all the prefaces from the same year into one big document and then uh, uh, segment them into thousand word chunks and then we uh, train the train multiple topic models on these chunks uh, using different uh, parameter settings this is, uh, and we uh, we have the observation that um, several topics are um, similar and they always occur in different uh, multiple m models so we consider them as a stable model and uh, uh, use them for further analysis for example uh, topics related to uh, uh, foreign literature 
Shakespeare and uh, poetry and so on. Uh, and as you can see, after this first date with our uh, corpus, we get uh, a lot of interest, uh, interesting output. And we, well, we made the decision with, uh, firstly, we con concentrate on this one topic, which is related to the vernacular language movement. And now, uh, Sixing will share some of her uh, observations and interpretations on this topic. Um, so, actually, uh, topic 15 were, was directly related to the vernacular language movement. Three points are observed in this topic. Um, first, uh, written vernacular Chinese replaced classical Chinese as the mainstream written language. As we can see in the figure one, uh, written vernacular Chinese, the um, romanization of the national language, romanized characters and Latin, uh, top topic words in this topic. And an exciting fact that we find in this topic is that three out of four words that were related to vernacular Chinese uh, are about um, Chinese romanization, which indicates that um, Chinese romanization is, was a top uh, was a popular topic in in the language reform in China. Um, this fact has been overlooked in the existing scholarship. Um, second, Mandarin distinguished itself from the vernacular language movement, although Mandarin and other Han dialects are all regarded as vernacular Chinese. Compared to dialects, the national language is related to this topic with much higher probability. However, when we chat, uh, when we uh, input the same the same phrase in Google Ngram, we will find that the word frequency of the national language did not show an overwhelming advantage over dialects, even in its high time in the late 19th century and early 20th century. To uh, look into this question. Um, we will apply sentiment analysis to examine the emotion expressions toward dialects and the national language to investigate whether Han dialects were marginalized by the national language movement in our future work. Third, we have an assumption that Beijing Mandarin has taken over Nanjing Mandarin to become the basis of the national language. Uh, we can see that the phrase Beiping, the formal name of Beijing, uh, appears in this topic. Actually, Mandarin has many dialects. Beijing dialects and Nanjing dialects are two competitive dialects for in the competition for the basis of the national language. Um, so in in our future work, we plan to apply word embedding models to compare the semantic distance between Beijing and the national language and that between Nanjing and the national language. Um, if the um, if the semantic distance um, between Beijing and the national language is shorter, I, um, the answer will be yes. Here's some reference. Thank you for your attention.